OK, hi there. Here's a video on the terms of trade. Now, this is a topic that students can get confused by and often misinterpret when it appears in an exam question. So hopefully we can clear up some misconceptions. First point is it's important to make a clear distinction between the terms of trade and the balance of trade. The way to think about this is as follows. The terms of trade represent the prices at which uh, trade takes place. So terms of trade is about prices. Uh, balance of trade is about the gap or the difference between the value of a country's exports of goods and services and the value of a country's imports. Terms of trade measures the relative price of exports compared to imports. The balance of trade is the difference between the total value of the things we sell overseas compared to the total amount we spend on goods and services coming in. There is a formula for calculating the terms of trade. Oftentimes you'll be given some data and you need to do a calculation. And of course you get a mark for showing the formula. So the terms of trade index is the index of export prices divided by the index of import prices. And then we multiply by 100 to get our terms of trade index. Now, again, important to make a distinction between an improvement in the terms of trade and a deterioration or worsening. So if the terms of trade improve, what that means is the price of a country's exports in overseas markets have gone up relative to the price of the things they have to import. <clears throat> a deterioration in the terms of trade index means that the price of exports a country sells overseas has gone down relative to the price of imports. Let's think about some reasons why the terms of trade for a country such as the UK or perhaps a, a, a country producing copper like Zambia, why might the terms of trade have improved or gone up? Firstly, a country may be switching uh, their production and <clears throat> their investment towards higher value exports. Perhaps they're starting to process tomatoes or coffee or cocoa as well as just extract and export. And if you move into higher value added industries, then the terms of trade can improve. It could be a, a, an external factor. It could be that the world economy uh, wants more of the things that you're producing. Maybe incomes have gone up and that's favouring your country's exports. So it could be the case that there's a surge in demand for a particular product. You're, you're an exporter. The world price of that goes up. The terms of trade therefore move in your favour. Could be the fact that the exchange rate has gone up in value. A rise in the exchange rate, otherwise known as an appreciation, causes, amongst other things, causes the cost of imports to go down. Think about the formula. Index of export prices over index of import prices. If the exchange rate goes down, <coughs> goes up, sorry, if the price of imports goes down, terms of trade likely to improve. It could be the case that some of the things you're buying, imported technology, such as computers or fiber optics, for example, Maybe the price globally has gone down, so it's going to cost you less. Or it could be the case, if you want to link it to protectionism, that you, you agree a trade deal with a country, which reduces um, uh, import tariffs, so imports become cheaper, or increases in import quota, means there's an increased supply of imports. So those are reasons why the terms of trade might improve. Equally, the terms of trade might worsen or deteriorate. It could be that more countries start producing the product that you're exporting, driving down the world price. It could be that technology reduces the cost of production and therefore the price of things you're exporting. It could be there's a, a recession in the world economy, which causes a fall in demand and prices of the things that you're exporting. The exchange rate may depreciate, which caused the price of imports to go up. Or perhaps there's a trade war, Tariffs introduced, which increases the price of essential raw materials and components, worsening the terms of trade. So it's important again to understand what causes movements in the terms of trade. Let's take a fall or worsening in the terms of trade. What does it mean? Well, a fall in the terms of trade means that a country must export more goods and services to maintain the same level of imports. You have to sell a lot of exports to buy a given quantity of imports. And in that sense, within a country, the real living standards may decline. Maybe imports have become more expensive. Imports of foodstuffs and energy drives up the rate of inflation and can cause a fall in people's real incomes. However, 
valuation point. If the terms of trade worsen because of a fall in the exchange rate, a depreciation, then that can also make your export sectors more competitive. So it could be some more jobs, some more output, some more investment. However, if the fall in the terms of trade is caused by uh, a decline in the world price of what you're exporting, this could be bad news because it worsens the trade balance. And crucially, the government gets a lot of revenue from exports. Uh, tax revenues will be expected to, to fall. So the implications of a fall in the terms of trade depend in part on what's actually caused it. Two examples to look at just in terms of some data. The terms of trade for the UK are actually relatively stable. You can see here by following the orange line. That's our terms of trade for, for goods and services. Australia is an interesting example. Notice here the surge, the improvement in the terms of trade for Australia during the years 2000 to 2010. This was mainly due to the, to the, the really high world price of things like coal, and iron ore, and they're two key exports for Australia, but also because the Australian dollar was very expensive, uh, which caused the um, price of imports to go down into Australia. That improved the terms of trade. But equally, the, the, the strong dollar improved the terms of trade, but it also contributed to a slowdown in, for example, the Australian tourist industry, and it also made their car exports much less competitive, indeed leading to the closure of some high-profile car manufacturing plants. So some countries have a stable terms of trade, not really an issue. I think the UK would fit into that. Some countries have a volatile terms of trade. Australia is a developed country where that's the case, and that's why examiners often choose these kind of countries. Another really good example, taking an emerging developing country, is Zambia. Zambia, of course, one of the world's biggest exporters of copper. Their terms of trade, highly volatile. There's our index, 2010, as our base year, as a value of 100. Terms of trade rising strongly in the first half of the decade. More or less since then, the terms of trade have been deteriorating quite sharply. Why is that the case? Well, one of their big exports is copper. And actually, if we put the two charts together here, what I'm doing is I'm putting the same chart on the left-hand side. And all I've done is put on the right-hand side the world price of high-grade copper. US cents per pound. Can you notice here that the terms of trade are volatile in part because the world price of copper is also so volatile. And likewise, the Zambian currency will move with the price of copper as well. So there we go, a quick update on the terms of trade.